Welcome to the MH2801 video segment on calculating residues at poles. Now, it is important because in step number step number two of our prescribed recipe for calculating contour integrals that we need to first determine the residues at the various poles of the integrand function f of z. So we need to be proficient at evaluating residues, different residues of, at poles of different orders, um, depending on the integrand function. Now, let's start simple uh, and look at all the different shortcuts that we can do. Because in, uh, in, actual, in actual practice, we do not evaluate the we did not determine the Laurent series expansion of f, uh, of f of z at the various poles so that we pick out a to a, uh, the coefficient a minus 1 uh, at e, all these poles. So what we can do is we can make use of some simple observations. The first of which, uh, to understand the first of which, let us consider the function f of z which has a simple pole at z, has a simple pole at z equals to z naught. Now what this means is that the function f of z has a Laurent series uh, expansion at z0 looking something like this a minus 1 at z0 divided by z minus z0 plus a0 at z0 plus a1 at z0 multiplied by z minus z0 plus a2 at z0 multiplied by z minus z naught square and so on and so forth. Now observe that if we multiply f of z by z minus z naught, okay, we then we will have a minus 1 at z naught plus a naught at z naught multiplied by z minus z naught plus a1 at z naught, z minus z naught squared, and so on and so forth. Now you, rec rec you realize that if we evaluate z at z naught, if we substitute in z equals to z naught, then this kind of terms uh, will vanish because they will go to zero. Okay, whenever z is equals to z naught. However, the residue term, okay, because it's not proportional to z minus z naught, it will remain, and therefore we know that, okay, z after multiplication by z minus z naught, okay, f of z, if we evaluate it at z equals to z naught, we will get the residue a minus one at z naught. So this is for a simple pole. Now what if um, f of z has a pole of uh, have a, has a pole of m order. So suppose now that f of z has a uh, pole of order m at say z equals to z one. Now what that means, of course, is that f of z, okay, uh, if we develop a Laurent series expansion about z equals to z1, uh, about z equals to z1, we will get a to the minus m at z1 divided by z minus z1 to the m power plus a minus m plus 1 at z1 divided by z minus z naught to the power of m minus 1 and then and so on and so forth until we get to a minus 1 at z1 divided by z minus, uh, this is not z naught, but it's z1, divided by z minus z1 plus a0 at z1 plus a1 at z1 times z minus z1. And then, of course, there are other regular terms. Now, uh, in this Laurent series expansion, we are only interested in we are only interested in the residue a minus 1 uh, at z1. 
But of course, we cannot simply multiply by z minus z1. We need to multiply by z minus z1 to the nth power so as to uh, get rid of the contributions by so as so the so that when we evaluate at z equals to z1, these terms will not blow up. So what we then first do is to multiply f of z by z minus z1 to the m power. So I will clear the screen and then write it down nicely. So the first thing we need to do would be to multiply okay, f of z by z minus z1 to the m power. And this we will find that it is a minus 1, a minus m, okay, at z1 plus a minus m plus 1 at z1 times z minus z1 uh, plus dot 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 plus a minus m, uh, not a minus m, sorry, but a minus 1. So let me... Okay, times a minus 1, okay, and this will be z minus z1 to the m uh, minus 1, okay, because they, they used to be a, oh, what divided, a minus 1 used to be divided by z minus z1, z minus z1, so if you multiply by z minus z1 to the nth power, we get z minus z1 to the m minus 1 power. And of course, this is evaluated at z1. And then of course, we have a0 evaluated at z1 of z minus z1 to the m power plus a1 evaluated at z1, uh, z minus z1 to the m plus 1 power and so on and so forth. Now, we don't want to evaluate at z equals to z1 now. So we do not evaluate now. So do not evaluate at z equals to z1 yet. Because if we do that, then uh, a to the minus 1 will be multiplied by uh, 0, and that will disappear, and we therefore would not be able to find what uh, a to the minus 1 at uh, z1 is. That's the residue that we're interested in. But we, note, we notice that if we differentiate now first, if we differentiate once with respect to uh, z, so if we differentiate d over dz of uh, z minus z1, the m, okay, fz, then we will, what will we get? Uh, this is a constant term, so if we differentiate once, this will disappear. And then this will let be left behind, so that a minus 1 plus 1 at z1 plus... Okay, here we will have m minus 1, okay, a to the minus 1 at z1, and then we will be left with z minus z1, m minus 2, and then plus a naught, z1, okay, there's an m here, and then z minus z1, m minus 1, plus so on and so forth. Okay, so we see that if, if we now... Uh, evaluate at z equals z1. We will be able to get rid of everything except for a minus 1 plus 1, uh, which is one order smaller than a to the minus 1. Uh, but of course, that is still not what we want because what we want is the residue a minus 1 evaluated at z1, uh, but this is accompanied by z minus z1 to the m minus 2 power. So what we can then do is we can then repeat this procedure until we have differentiated how many times? Because in this expression, after multiplication by z minus z1 to the m power, okay, the, 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 power of, uh, the power of z minus z1 in the term that is proportional to a minus 1 is actually m minus 1. So we need to differentiate m minus 1 times. So differentiate it m minus 1 times. Okay, of z minus z1 to the m power fz. Then what we will get is, okay, we will get, of course, m minus 1, m minus 2, dot, 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 until we get down 1. Uh, and then we will have our a minus 1 evaluated as z1. 
Then for uh, for a zero, it will of course start with m, then m minus one, then dot 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 until we get to two, and then a zero evaluated at z one, z minus z one, then plus dot dot dot. Okay. So now at this point, if we if we evaluate uh, z evaluate the expression at z equals to z one then every term will vanish except for the uh, residue term. Uh, and the residue term is actually proportional to m minus 1 factorial, okay, a minus 1, z1, plus uh, dot dot dot, which will become 0. So let me write that down explicitly. So all these terms will become 0, and then you're left with only a minus 1, uh, z1, uh, if you evaluate it at... Uh, uh, z equals to z1. So therefore what we can then write is a minus 1 at z1 for a pole which has a, if if the pole at z1 is actually of order uh, m then it will this will be equals to 1 over m minus 1 factorial dm minus 1 over dzm minus 1 z minus z1 m and then f z and then everything evaluated at z equals to z1 so this will be the expression for the residue for a pole of order m at z1